Hey guys, this is Rene, welcome back for another video on this channel and today I want to talk about the DX Trade platform one more time um, because a lot of you guys seem to be interested in this and I worked on the DX Trade bridge some more and now it is a pretty much fully functioning DX Trade bridge um, where you can mirror your trades from the MetaTrader 5 to the DxTrade platform. Of course, this program might not be super perfect and some minor adjustments uh, could be necessary, but I just want to keep you updated so you have all the um, so you have a good foundation pretty much for your own bridge if you want to modify this in um, in some ways. So this DX trade bridge will now not work for just like one single trade or for one single program, but it should mirror all the trades in your account. And I, will, I want to start by showing you some uh, easy examples. I'm recording this video on a Saturday, so I will only be trading Bitcoin US dollar here or also, wait, I can also show some other cryptocurrencies i think um do we have ethereum yes we have it so yeah let me open ethereum also so you can see my dx trade bridge program is on the bitcoin us dollar chart and if i now click on sell here selling 0 0.12 um uh, bitcoin contracts pretty much in the ic markets platform yeah, you just saw if I press sell 0.12, it will also open uh, the sell 0.12 on the DX trade platform that I show here on the left side right now. And I could, for example, change the lot size and also buy, let's say 0.18 here of the Bitcoin uh, in the MT5 and it will mirror the trade on the DX trade platform. Also, this will work for all the trades in your account now. Um, for example, I could also go and open some uh, Ethereum trades here. Lot size does not really matter. Let's just open one, two, three uh, Ethereum trades. And yeah, and now you can see we have a bunch of trades open. And if I now close, let's say the 0 0.18 buy for Bitcoin, I just close it on the MetaTrader 5 and it will close the exact same tra uh, trade on the DXTrade platform. So let's just get rid of all of these trades here. And you can see all of the trades are also closed on the DX trade platform. And now you will, oh, I want to show you that it also works with uh, limit orders. Um, let's say I want to place a sell limit order, maybe with a, uh, yeah, maybe let's go with a sell limit order. So if this uh, sell limit order is executed on the MetaTrader 5 platform, it, it should then open this trade also on DX trade and it does and same goes for stop loss and TP levels. So basically this is the the easiest way to create such a bridge because we are just reacting on the deals on the MetaTrader 5 platform. So um, right now like if I just place a stop loss or a TP on the MetaTrader 5 it will not place the stop loss and or the TP on the DX trade platform, but once one of these levels is uh, reached, uh, triggered, um, yeah, let me force this here so we see the trade will be closed either in TP or in stop loss. Then we will see that this operation will also uh, yeah, become transferred to the DX trade platform by the bridge that I created, and then it will close this trade. On the DX trade platform and yeah after demonstrating this last test I will show you how to write this program so you can use it for your own trading if you want to use or if you have to use DX trade I should say and come on guy hit the stop loss or the TP I don't even care wait let me move it even closer and yeah you can see it hit the TP here and the trade on DX trade was was, was just closed. So this is how it works. So let me demonstrate you the, the code now. So in the MetaTrader 5, I will just show you the finished code for the DX trade bridge. So very, very, very important. I will base this video on the previous video that I make, uh, made. I can also link it somewhere here. So the previous video that I made was to introduce you to the DX trade API in general, like how it works with the authentication, um, what you need to do to um, send orders in the first place and to get a connection between 
like meter trader 5 and dig trade so you should definitely watch this video otherwise you will not really be able to follow along in this video but if you if you watched the previous video if you coded the program on your own pc you can now watch this video and follow along so what I did here to the DX trade bridge were some changes. I will just talk about the changes. So I included two files here. These are all MQL5 um, native framework files. So you do not have to download everything and anything from the internet. We just included the trade um, slash deal info uh, class or C deal info class. And then we downloaded or included the hash map .mqh file because we will need these two classes later on and you can find all of these classes or you should find them in the include folder of your MetaTrader 5 in the navigator like the hash map is in the generic folder and the include is in the in the uh, the, the deal info is in the in the trade folder so if you included these two files then you are able to create the um, uh, object. I called it positions. It's just the map where I want to map the positions on the MetaTrader 5 platform to the positions on the DX Trade platform. And it's a hash map. Hash maps work like um, they have a key value concept pretty much. So you can always put paths into this hash map. Um, for example, you can put a... 10 and a 12 into this hash map. So 10 would function as the key, 12 would function as, as the, the, the value. So if you ask for key number 10, it would give you the value 12. So why do we need this hash map? We need this hash, hash map because I also demonstrated this, like if I open just one lot um, or one contract, whatever of Ethereum, it will also open one contract of Ethereum here on uh, DxTrade. But of course, wait, let me demonstrate it to you like this again. But of course, you can see the ticket number on MetaTrader 5 is a different ticket number than the ticket number or position ID on the DX Trade platform. So this is exactly what I want to map in this hash map. So we will also have the uh, position ticket number um, of the MetaTrader 5 position as the key and then map it to the value, the position ID on the DXTrade platform. So this is why I created this C um, hash map um, instance, um, which I called positions. Then the on init function was not changed. Um, I just log into this uh, yeah, or I just log in to get the, the, the token variable updated and to get the timeout. And then in the onTick function, I also did not change anything here. We just um, check if the timeout is nearly reached and then we just ping the API to get an update here for our token. So this is basically what's happening. And then I added a big block here, which is the on trade transaction function. So this is the most important block that I added for the DX trade bridge in order to work like it is working right now. So the on trade transaction for anyone who did not use it yet, but I think if you're watching this video, which is kind of advanced, you should know how it works. But let me explain it in uh, briefly. The on trade tra transaction is a event handling function in the MetaTrader 5, and it is triggered automatically whenever there is a trade event. So you can see this is the perfect function because we are reacting on the trading operations here, the position opening and the position closing pretty much in the MetaTrader 5 terminal. So this is why as a first step here in this on trade transaction, I'm checking if the trade transaction that triggered this function was a trade transaction deal add, which means if tra uh, trans dot type is equal to trade transaction deal add, it means that in the MetaTrader 5, a deal was added to the history. And whenever a deal is added to the history, it means that a position is opened or closed. This is for hedging accounts, for net netting accounts, it could also mean that a position was like increased in volume or decreased, but let's just talk about hedging accounts. So this event means that a position was opened or closed. So this also means that our bridge has to get active and open or close a position on the DX trade platform, right? So what we do next is we use the C deal info class. And remember, this is the one that I included here or 
the file that I included here contains the C deal info class. And we will create a object variable, which I call deal of this C deal info class. Then we select a history using the transaction deal. The transaction or the trans is the MQL trade transaction structure, which is filled before the on trade transaction is called or executed and it is given to us, um, yeah, or passed to us by, uh, by reference here. And yeah, we can use all the um, uh, variables in the MQL trade transaction structure and you can read about it here. For example, we get the deal ticket that just caused this trade transaction deal at event. So we try to select a history with this specific deal. And since a deal triggered this event, this should be successful. So as a next step, we can update the ticket for our deal um, uh, object variable here. This is important because then in the next step, we want to use all of the other functions of the C trade class. And these only work if you selected a deal or if you updated the ticket of this deal um, object here. So then we now have to specify some variables and we will need these variables later on for the order placing. Um, and the place order function is something that we know already from the previous video. In the previous video, it was called send order. I just renamed it and I modified it a bit. So now it has different parameters. So maybe let's talk about this place order function again. So let me, uh, or first, so let me find it. So down here, you can see the login function is completely the same as in the previous video. So I don't have to explain any, anything here. Ping function also the same as in the previous video. So I don't, don't have to talk about this. But now this um, send order or no place order function is what I really changed. Because here I added a bunch of uh, parameters for this function. And this was necessary because now we want to use the place order function to not only open positions on the DX trade platform, but also close positions. And of course, if you need more information, you can read about this in the DX trade um, API reference and it will explain everything you need to know. So I had a lot of people commenting below the first video. Hey, Rene, can you explain this? Can you explain that? Um, you can pretty much just read about in the API documentation. This is exactly what I have to do and exactly what I did. So I'm not smarter than you. I just do the same things that you can do to understand the API. So just read the reference. I don't have any other knowledge. I just took it from the reference. So, but now let me explain how I changed this send order or now place order function. First of all, I added these parameters. So the order code, the instrument, the quantity, the position effect, the position code, the site, and I added another parameter here, which is the order ID. This is something that is passed by reference here. So this will be not passed as a actual value where the place order function works with, but it will be uh, passed as a empty variable, which should be updated by the place order function later. We will see this in a second. Then the URL, the, the, the definition, definition of these variables, the headers, everything, this did not change in comparison to the last video. This is completely the same, but the JSON changed a bit because I exchanged these hard-coded values for the order code, for, for the order code, for the instrument, for the quantity, for the position effect, for the uh, site. I exchanged these with the values from these parameters now. So whenever the place order function is called, these parameters have to be provided and they will then be used for the actual API call at the uh, DX trade server. Then I added one more thing here. I added this line, which is the position code. We need the position code when we want to close positions on the DX trade uh, platform or server, whatever you want to call it. So the position code is only necessary for closing operations and it is necessary because the DX trade platform needs to know what specific position should be closed. So in this case, we have to, uh, for example, if we want to close position number uh, 4938, blah, 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 we have to give this position ID 
uh, or we have to add this position ID as the position code value in this JSON here that we send to the server. So this is why I added this line and why I also added it here as a parameter for the place order function. Then we, um, yeah, this is pretty much the same. We just turn this JSON into a character array and add it into the post, um, into the post character array here. And then we send this request to the DXTrade server. Everything's the same until here. And then these two lines were also added. I mean, this is just a print statement, but just this line here is of course important. It is the order ID and you can see this order ID is the same variable that was passed here as a parameter for the place order function. So this is important and this is why this order ID here is a parameter for the place order function because it will be updated here. So when sending a order to the DXTrade API, you will, like if this order is successful, so if it returns um, uh, server code 200, it's successful, and then this will return, and again, you can read all of this in the documentation, so this is exactly what you should do, and you can see it like um, order ID, it is here, it says the order response, um, which is given to you when, um, when you send an order, it is given as a JSON, and it will contain two fields, order ID and update order ID. We just need the order ID because it is the order that will be placed at the DXTrade platform. And one specific uh, information here, which is very important, when a order is executed here, um, wait, let me get the last order. It's this one. It's, um, have a look at this order ID. It ends with zero. Uh, five, eight. And if we now have, have a look at the position, it has the same position ID. So this concept that we know from the MetaTrader 5 already also applies to the DXTrade platform. So if a order is executed on DXTrade, this might only be like this for hedging accounts, but this is what I'm talking about. If a order is executed on the DXTrade platform, it will open a position and the position has the same ID as the order that executed this position or opened this position. So this is why here, if we send a order successfully to the DXTrade um, server, we will get the order ID back um, as the, uh, yeah, in, the, in the result information or the message that we get from the server. So this is why we can get the order ID from the JSON that we get back from the server after sending a um, request. And here, this is also something that I added. I now um, added the get JSON long value function because this will get a JSON long value from a uh, yeah bigger JSON string. So before this, like in the last video, we just had the get JSON string value, but this doesn't really work for numbers. And since the order ID, and again, you can read it on the documentation, it is a number. And um, yeah, this is why we need to add a new function or create a new function for this. And I call this get JSON long value. And let's have a look at this function. It's actually really, really similar to the get JSON string value. But the difference is that here, instead of adding, um, uh, instead of adding three characters here to the starting index, we just add two characters and also we are not searching for this escape and um, uh, quotation mark here for the ending index but instead we just search for this uh, comma and this these changes will make sure that we get the uh, JSON long value. I just realized this might not work for the last JSON long value in a JSON um, string but yeah, for this purpose, is, it is fine because um, the, uh, the, the order ID is not the last value because there's also the update order ID following. But um, yeah, if you want to use this, uh, if you want to modify this, you might have to modify this function. But for this um, EA as I have it here right now, this is totally fine. So yeah, you can see this will just give us the long value from a JSON. So we are able to get the order ID here stored in this order ID variable. So this is um, how I modified the place order function. Why did I do this? 
To learn more about this, we have to go all the way back here to the on-trade transaction function. Because now we understand why I created these variables here, like the order code, the instrument, the quantity, and everything. This is because we will need it if or when sending the order or placing the order or sending the order placement request to the server later on using the place order function. We need these variables as parameters. So how do we calculate or get these parameters? Order code is just Again, like watch the first video if you didn't, if you don't know what it is, it's just a unique code that you have to send to the server with your order. And here I decided to just use the deal ticket from the MetaTrader 5 because the deals on MetaTrader 5 they just increase, so it's unique um, for sure. So we will just use the deal ticket here as an order code. Then as an instrument, we will just use the deal symbol from the MetaTrader 5. And important, if you try to mirror your trades from one broker on the MetaTrader 5 to another broker on the DX Trade platform, the symbols might have different names, of course. And in this case, you might have to choose a different symbol name. And um, yeah, you could, if this is the case for you, you could, for example, create another object of the C-hash map type and just map the symbols on MetaTrader 5 with the symbol names on the DX Trade platform. This should work. But yeah, for now, this is fine for my uh, specific use case here because I use the same symbol names on the MetaTrader 5 as on the DX Trade platform. Then for the quantity, I just use the deal volume from the deal on MetaTrader 5. There's one uh, specific uh, thing that you should also have a look at because when we opened EURUS dollar trades or GBPUS dollar or USD US dollar, like just any Forex pair, on the uh, DX Trade platform, we don't do it um, providing the quantity in lots, but instead the absolute volume was requested. We saw this in the previous video. So for, for this um, purpose, you have to check if your deal um, or if the if the symbol that your deal was opened in on MetaTrader 5, if it is a Forex symbol, and then you have to increase the quantity uh, or multiply the quantity with 100K to get the absolute uh, volume. Um, I did not, I was not able to test this code yet because again, I'm doing this on a Saturday. I cannot trade Forex, but it should work like this. You can test it on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever you want. Uh, and maybe you have to modify it if it's broken, but this is like the, the general idea of how you can, you can handle this problem. And then also we create this order ID, which is just a empty variable. And again, I explained this before. We need this to pass it as a last and, um, reference parameter here for the place order function. But now let's have a, have a look at the next steps first. Here we then check if this deal that is happening on the MetaTrader 5 right now, if it is a entry deal or a exit deal. So for in deals, we of course update the position effect also or create the position effect variable and update it to open because this is what the DX Trade platform expects for opening um, orders. And the site will be um yeah buy or sell and um actually i think this could also be moved up here because it should be always the same for uh, in and out deals so yeah we also get the site because this is requested from the dx trade api and then after defining all of these variables here we can use them to send the order using the place order function. Here I decided to give the MetaTrader 5 a maximum of 10 tries. Um, and we're just trying to place the order at the DX Trade server using the place order function. So we are sending the order using the order code, the instrument, the quantity, the position effect. And here for entry orders, we don't have a position code because this is on only relevant for exit uh, orders. So here we can just leave this empty. And then we have the site and the empty order ID variable. Then we are checking if the result was equal to 200, which means that the operation was successful and the order was placed at the server. Then we go to our hash map here, which in my case is named positions, and we add this um, key value pair with a position at the MetaTrader 5 as the key and the order ID 
that is now filled here into this variable by the place order function, this will be the value. So we have the key and value pair in our map. And this is, uh, this is very cool, I think. Also, I have this print statement to yeah, just say what's going on. Um, and then we break uh, from this for loop. This is also important. So if the order was placed successfully, we can leave the loop and we can go on with our normal business because the order was mirrored or transferred to the DXTrade platform. But if we were not able to get this um, 200 return code from the server, we should maybe sleep here for, let's say, one second before we try to send the order again. And yeah, that's pretty much how we can handle this. And then if we have an exit deal on MeterTrader 5, which will, of course, also trigger the on-trade transaction function, then we have the position effect as close here. And we get, um, and then we want to find the specific position ID at DXTrade from our hash map. So we create a empty uh, unsigned long variable, which is named value in my case. And then we try to get the value using the try get value function from the positions map using the key which is the position on the metatrader 5 again and we try to get the value stored in our var value variable if this does not work it means we cannot really say what position we want to close on the DX trade server so in this case we just get a print message and we leave the on trade transaction uh, function because then something went wrong. I don't know what, but yeah, this maybe the there was some uh, error in the meter trader. It crashed or something. But yeah, if you cannot find the value for the key, it doesn't really make sense to um, go on with the next code. But if you find the value for the key, and usually this will happen, of course, because you stored the key value pair correctly when you opened the positions. So if you did it correctly, then you have the value. Um, stored uh, or the, the, the position ID stored in this value variable and then you can um, use this as the position code. The position code is requested by the DE trade uh, API as a string value so we have to use the integer to string function on the value here and then we have the position um, ID of the DE trade platform um, as a string in the position code variable. Then again, we tried 10 times at maximum to place the closing order. And here, of course, we have um, the position code or the position ID that we got here as a parameter. And we also have the empty order ID here. In this case, we do not really need it, but um, yeah, we still have to provide it, of course, for the function. Then we check if this was successful. And if it was successful, um, Oh, wait, this is not really correct. Um, we have to delete or remove. What's the function? Yeah, we have to remove the key uh, transaction position. We can remove the transaction position from the map. So the, the space will be free again in the map. Just uh, housekeeping. And then we have the information for the user and we break from the loop. And if we are not able to close, we maybe want to sleep for one second before we try it again. Or maybe just 500 milliseconds. I mean, this is whatever you want to do, right? So if I compile it like this again, there should be no errors. And this is the complete bridge that I created and that you can now use. So let me check if after my changes it still works. So when I close this position now, it will not close the position on the server of the straight because I compiled the program several times and it will delete the map um, or it will empty the map, of course, in the in the uh, in the program. So if you want to make this bridge crash safe and everything, you would have to do like you would have to make like one or two more adjustments, of course. But oh yeah, position was closed. But yeah, now with the changes that I made, let me check this again. Uh, wait, let's close this. So yeah, position was closed. Um, the program is still running here. So let's test this. Let's open 0 0.18 Bitcoin. Opens it on the server. Gives us all the information that we need in the expert journal here. Successfully placed, blah, blah, blah. And then if I close this position on the meeting Twitter 5, there we go, it will close the position. Same goes with the sell trades, of course. 
And yeah, that's the bridge. And it is like the easiest implementation, I think, that you could have to mirror or copy your trades from the MetaTrader 5 to DX trade. But it's super efficient and it works for every order on the MetaTrader 5 or every position. So you can do manual trading, you can do expert advisor trading. It will just work fine uh, as long as, of course, your MetaTrader 5 does not crash and everything. But you could also handle these errors if you just add some more code to the MetaTrader 5 program. But I think I won't make a tutorial for this because it doesn't really have to do anything with the DX trade API. It's just um, like basic MetaTrader 5 programming that you should know um, if you are working with MetaTrader 5 for a long time. So yeah, that's how you can create a really simple um, bridge that mirrors the trade from the MetaTrader 5 to the DX trading platform. And let me show you the code again. Maybe... Yeah, I will show you the code again. Yeah, maybe I will post the code just as a comment um, below the YouTube video in this case because this was not, was not a real coding tutorial. I just explained the code. So um, yeah, I will maybe post it as a, as a comment. Um, of course, you can use this code, you can modify it, but don't make me, um, don't blame me if there are any errors or problems. As I said, this code is not like super perfect for any use case. There might be some adjustments needed, but it's a good starting point if you want to create your own DX trade bridge that is perfect for your own situation or own um, personal situation. Also, you can do this, of course, if you want to get all the positions on the DX trade platform. This was something that I also did. Uh, I didn't use it in the end, but it will also show you how to get like the trades from the DX trade platform. But again, all of this stuff is also um, listed and explained on the DX trade API uh, reference webpage. So hope you like this. Let me know what you what you think about it. And yeah, if you were able to use it and if it if it helps you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Maybe share the video if you if you think other people might benefit from it. And yeah, just um, just want to get this out into the world so some of you guys um, don't have to worry anymore um, if the MetaTrader 5 uh, no longer works with your broker or your prop firm. You can now just use this bridge to mirror the trades. That's it. Thanks for watching. Have a great time. Good trades. Bye.